Hello, and welcome to today's Farm Management Friday video. Today's video will answer the question, how do you manage and utilize information shared in an agricultural market outlook? Our featured speakers for today will be Leonard Polzine, Dairy Markets and Policy Outreach Specialist. He will be joined by Dr. Brenda Botel, UW River Falls Professor and Agricultural Economics Department Chair, an Extension Agricultural Marketing Specialist. Today's video will help you as a farmer answer the question of how to utilize information and assess the outlook for your farm. You may receive information in the past, such as historical production and yield. There's information currently talking about trades and marketing. And there's also future information, looking at what the next year might bring. All of this information is utilized in sharing an outlook. So how can you, as a farmer, glean this information and utilize it in your farming business? I'll turn it over to Leonard and Brenda to tell you more. So kind of some of the things we're gonna talk about here is some of the basic definitions within an outlook, what an outlook is and what that means for, uh, for you as a producer. We're gonna get back to the beginning, right? So begin with the end in mind, bring things back to basics. Uh, look at so what, right? What are some of the management implications um, of the information that you receive when you're uh, taking a look at what some outlook information might be, and then see what some of the red flags are. So um, part of the reason that we're doing all this, uh, Dr. Botel, I know as you kind of go around and give a lot of uh, outlook presentations on everything from corn markets, soybean markets, uh, beef market, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to pontificate about the markets and, uh, you know, trading volumes and all these things. Um, but I know, at least for me, I always like to keep in mind who the audience is and make sure that I'm gearing my information, um, you know, towards, towards them, right? So that way it has some type of on-farm uh, application. Would you say that's kind of the approach as well? I would say that's the approach. And it, exactly what, what's the point? You know, the market can have the same impacts, but how whether you see that as good or bad is really going to be dependent. So corn price going up might be great if you're a corn producer, but if you're the cattle feeder, it's not necessarily an ideal situation. So even though the information's there at the end, it's there, but it's ultimately as a producer, what is it you're wanting to know and what might be the things that impact it? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So one thing that um, I think is important to establish, uh, particularly at the beginning, is like, what is an outlook, right? Well, it's a view from a particular place in time um, and a particular point of view. So let's talk about place and time for a second. Now, as I go around and give outlooks, even as I give a similar presentation to similar audiences, as time goes on, I find that my outlook even changes, right? Because new information comes in, the market is telling us things, right? And we're responding as well as the industry is responding, right? So then we take all of that information, synthesize it down to be able to give some sort of uh, tangible, meaningful um, sort of view, right? So point of view that we're seeing in the market. So point of view, another way to think about that is where you're coming from. So as uh, in the academic world, we might be coming from more of a pure, information-based standpoint, right? This is what we're seeing, that translate into part of the message. Um, your point of view could also be, um, you know, what you're motivated by. Are you part of an organization that sells information? Are you part of an organization that maybe has a specific product that they're trying to uh, market or, or inform you on, right? So that's part of point of view. The other thing is um, for an outlook is the prospect for the future. So we take where we're at now and we look forward, right? Forward in time. And really nobody has a crystal ball, right? So we don't really know for sure what the future holds, but um, what we're trying to do is just take all of the different components that might create an influence in this greater thing we call the market, right? And draw some general conclusions about what that might be. So that's really kind of the goal or approach of an outlook presentation. So begin with the end in mind, the goal again, as the presenter, at least from an academic standpoint, um, we try to be uh, maybe a little bit more heavy on the information than the entertainment side, um, simply because that's really what we're shooting for, right? Is like to get that information across to folks that they might be looking for. Um, so that way it can make an impact in their operation, their business, right? So now on the very far 
part of the slide it says goal, and then after that is information and entertainment. Now, if you're going to a uh, presentation or taking in information or going taking in a presentation, and your goal is to be entertained, nothing wrong with that, right? We just encourage you to make sure that you uh, match your approach with the expectations and the management that comes from that. So if your goal is to be informed, then we, let's take the next step to see if it's unbiased or biased information, right? So, and then from there, so what? If we have unbiased information, then so what? Why does that matter? What's included in that? What would you like to see more of? And again, why does it matter? Well, management implications. Is there any action that you can take on your farm now that can make a difference in the next six, eight, 12 months, maybe more? Um, so while we're on this, we'll kind of break down each of these parts as we go on um, and then kind of take it from there. So here you can see the goal, right? Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm assuming that you don't either. Definitely not. So keep that in mind, right? Nobody knows for sure what the future holds. We're just trying to take all of the information that could contribute to a future outcome that we're seeing at this particular moment in time and then trying to inform or educate around that. So one thing again, if we have... If our goal is to be entertained, no problem. If it's to be informed, then let's think about some of the components that are necessary in order to have really good information so that way we can make these management decisions from it. So as the cartoon on the slide says, and here is a chart that shows what you might see if you looked at a mountain range through a tennis racket. So while he is very correct, right, um, in that sort of slide or information may not be super meaningful because what are you supposed to do with it? Right? So keep that in mind as you go along. Another thing is begin with the end in mind. Where are you at right now? So what is your viewpoint? Now in this uh, cartoon here, the doctor is examining the patient, but he has a, um, a picture of the patient on the wall and more of a, uh, we'll say, non-traditional stance where um, compared to what maybe a, a physician would examine somebody, and it says, I used to be a veterinarian. So I like this because it kind of depicts, um, you know, what your previous experiences are, what your viewpoint is, could influence how you're examining something, right? And that gets us into this idea of unbiased and biased information. So would you kind of want to define unbiased and biased information and where maybe some sources of unbiased information might be? Well, essentially that's, uh, if, you're, if you're at a presentation um, and the person is representing or trying to essentially at some point try to sell you something, they're gonna be providing you with some type of bias information. It might be that uh, ultimately that, that data is un unbiased, but the way in which it's presented or the way in which it's discussed, it has some type of, of message that's going to be supportive of their particular firm. You know, if you're the, truly looking at unbiased, then, then that presenter or that information, there's no ability for any profitability for that particular firm to gain from that by giving you that information. So that's truly the, the idea of that unbiased um, presentation there. So what are some sources of unbiased data that people might utilize either in their own operations or in a presentation? Well, most of that unbiased data is going to come from, again, a source that is publicly available to everyone. Um, that they're not having to pay for. So if I'm looking at USDA data, ERS data, AMS data, um, those that are available to everybody, I don't have to pay for it. Everybody has access to it, has access to it at the exact same time. And, you know, when I look at those types of information there, the U.S. government isn't gaining anything. They have no profitability by providing that information. So it's a truly unbiased source of data in that case. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. So again, let's get back to this, that very uh, end goal, right? When you're sitting and gaining information and listening to people that have kind of dissected the market, why does it matter, right? So in this cartoon, it says, what if we don't change at all and something just magically happens? Now, with any business, any commodity business, right? Sometimes no action can be a good action, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you do get lucky. Sometimes no action can be an informed decision and a right and a right choice, right? But uh, making the decision of no decision without additional information, um, you know, kind of might be this just, you know, let's just see what happens and magically hope with fingers crossed that something, you know, good is the outcome. Well, uh, 
that's typically not your best course of action. Like, as you said, typically is the idea if you choose to do nothing, have it be an active choice, right? Um, rather than just do nothing because of indecision or lack of information. Yeah, I think that's a good approach as well. So when you're um, kind of at the end of a presentation that you've listened to somebody speak on, um, some questions that I encourage you to think of is what was included, right? What information did they include? Was it... Um, all encompassing of the market? Was it one side of the market or the other? Which perspective were they on? Were they on the buyer side? Were they on the seller side? Did they incorporate, you know, one or more of those aspects into it? And then, um, you know, what would you like to see more of? Did they have, um, did they bring up a point that you might find to be more interesting that could be, um, you know, if they dissected it a bit more, uh, be of more value for your operation and your decision making. Um, I think all those are good things to to think about and keep in mind because it, it keeps that probing going, it keeps that decision making going and incorporate a lot of those like what ifs, right? What if this changes? What if that changes? What is, how does that matter on my farm? And that's really gets to the last point. Why does it matter? That gives us to the so what. At, the uh, bottom of this cartoon, it says, I'll pause for a moment so you can let this information sink in. And he has this very complex chart that doesn't seem to have any very clear depiction or meaning. Um, and our hope is, um, at least as my hope when I give a presentation, is that when people walk away, they don't feel like this, even though sometimes that's uh, the information that it feels like we work with is all of these things up and down and this way and that, right? But um, really, uh, you know, we try to be as, as putting some uh, constraint on that, right, to generally provide some guidance. Um, so I think that's another good thing to look for in an outlook presentation is, hey, where do these people fall? Are they all over the place? Do they have a succinct message? Is their message, you know, defendable, reliable, um, you know, kind of pass that smell test, if you will, of being in line with what you're looking for and taking action on. So one thing that uh, I think is really important is to kind of get back to the basics, right? It's easy to talk about what's new in the news or what's going on um, in all of the popular press things within any particular industry. Um, but I think it's good to get back to some of the really basic fundamental supply and demand things, right? Supply goes up, demand curve slopes down, right? So um, if you want to walk through, maybe share with us some of the big things that you see on the supply side, the demand side, that might have, um, you know, a greater influence in what future potential prices might be. Well, and and here's where, like where you were talking about with the previously, there might be a lot of information, you know, that's being given to you in an Outlook presentation, right? So going back to your chart where you had before, where you're like, okay, here's all of this back and forth. Sometimes this is what it sounds like, right? Because you might have one thing that's impacting the market where we're saying this is an imp impact that might make the market prices go up. Here's another thing that's going to make the market prices go down, right? Um, and so it's at the end of the day, we don't really know where prices are going to go. We're just trying to sort it out. So what we do when we're looking at that is we kind of break each one of those impacts down individually to look at the impact that that, if everything else was being held constant or the same levels, what would that do to prices? And that's where we're kind of looking at those supply shifters. So like in this case, when I go through an outlook, um, like I'm looking at it like, what's happening to prices if the if the input prices of it so if it's corn and suddenly uh fertilizers their prices go dramatically higher as we might have seen recently um you know what does that do for our production for corn well typically if the input prices are going higher we're going to produce less acres of it that would give me some indication that if everything else was the same we have less corn being produces and so we're going to have less supply that should be prices going up. So we can kind of look at those supply shifters. Um, so what it does is, a, as you can see in this case, if the prices of, of the fertilizer went up, we would go from that where that's that S curve on the one that's on the left there. Basically, we'd be going back to an S1 curve. And if demand was exactly the same, then we would see that the price of corn would go up as well. That's assuming everything else is the same. So that means that government tools, anything we have for risk management protection is the same. If we're looking at any competition, um, the production of soybeans or anything that we could use, um, in other words, might be the same. 
technology. We don't have any in new technology that's there that's going to allow us to increase the amount of bushels per acre that we receive from corn. Um, and then the prices of those other products or weather types of things. So those are the typical ones we look at. So when we're looking at those outlooks, we kind of go through each one of those supply shifters. And that's where a lot of times you might say, like in my case, I might go through and I might very much talk about like, well, here's the yield. Um, and that went down and that would have this impact, right? But we, on the other hand, we also had more acres, you know? So even though the number of acres is up, um, but the yield is down. What does all that mean? So there's there's this con there's this constant discussion of whether or not each one of those factors might be bullish or bearish. But at the end of the day, we're looking at what does it all mean altogether. So to get there, we have to look at each individual part. When we look at the demand side, then um, for those same concept, we're looking at what is each one of these things that impacts the demand shift, what causes demand to change. So uh, if everything else was the same, why would demand suddenly fall off? Um, so if in that case where if you're looking at the one where it says decrease in demand, that's basically saying my demand curve shifted in that direction. So even if the price of the product was exactly the same, people still would want less of it. So that might be cases where we have things like people have different changes in taste and preference. So we have those social attitudes um, of, of the product. It might be that there's less consumers that are there. It might be that the prices of other products are there. So we are, have, uh, have changed. And so there's a substitutability effect between those products. Um, income can impact it. So when I look at, and I'm doing a cattle report, I really tend to look at income because that impacts beef significantly, um, or just expectations of what demand's gonna be. So all of those things can be there. We have to look at each one of them individually when we're doing an outlook. And then at the end of that outlook, we compile them all together to eventually say what our expectation is for prices. But to get there, we have to look at each piece to begin with. So this really kind of brings us to the, um, kind of the encompassing so what of, uh, of the topic here today. And that is um, that information changes situations, right? The more informed you are about, um, let's take an easy example, um, grains and say corn, right? Say we're a grain farmer, we have corn that is harvested and we have corn that is, so that, that'd be old crop, right? And then let's take a look at future, right? Where, where is the corn market gonna be, say, in the next 12 months, right? So let's take a look at some of the management implications that you could utilize from, um, or that you could implement based on an outlook presentation. So you have information, right? So a good example might be, um, you know, maybe we're tight on stocks, which means that we have less corn in inventory in the nation than what we had previously. So tight on stocks, what would that generally mean? Price goes? If we have less of it, typically the price is gonna go up. Perfect, so now this goes to that next one, impact, right? We have less of it, price is gonna go up, impact. So you can think of on your operation then, is this a short-term thing? Is this a long-term thing? Is it, um, you know, does it have repercussions only in this year, only in this marketing year, only in this calendar year? Or is this gonna have what they call spillover effects into maybe future years as well? Mm -hmm. Now, all of that kind of depends on, you know, level. How much are we short? What does the future expectations of planting look like? All of these things, right? But really it gets down to, is it short-term? Is it long-term? Is it a supply side issue? Is it a demand side issue? Um, and then for you in your operation, is it affect your income? Does it affect your expenses? You know, and then with that, how do you manage that? If it's an expense side, what tools are available to you? If it's an income thing, again, what risk management or tools are available to you? Is it a good time to protect some future income now? Is it a good time to um, you know, lock in prices? Uh, all of these things, right? And that leads us to that top gear of management. Risk management, are you gonna make an adjustment to your production practice? Um, are you gonna have some new consideration of maybe impl technology implementation, implementation into your uh, farming operation? Um, and then budgeting, planning, right? Now, again, there's no crystal ball, but maybe utilizing some of this information in your next year's plan, in your next month's financial planning, um, can kind of see where 
maybe your operation might fall on that profitability scale, right? And that leads us to that sensitivity analysis thing. Um, one thing that I, I enjoy listening to your presentations um, is at the end of them, you'll have kind of a breakdown of maybe percent of crop that might be recommended to price either at a certain time or a certain price level. I think that's a great example of a management implication, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're you know, at 20% priced or 30% priced, now you can take a look at, you know, some information that was shared with you and then say, hey, uh, based on where I'm at in my operation, does that impact any management practice that I should be thinking about? Is, is the recommendation currently, uh, you know, am I below that? Am I above that? Can I paint a good story as to why I would be different than what the other information is, right? And again, not saying anybody's wrong or right. You have to make your individual decisions, but um, it's always good to be able to have that uh, have that story as to why one might be different than the other. So with that, um, kind of getting to the end of the presentation here, red flags, right? What are some things to, to watch out for? Um, one thing that I see um, and that we touched on before is like broad sweeping generalizations that don't have um, you know, the underlying justification within them. Um, for example, if they say, oh, grain markets are gonna be great the next year, they might be right, they might be wrong. Nobody knows, right? But are they taking in pieces of market information that justify that? Are they talking about then like stocks to use ratios? Are they talking about, you know, inventory? Are they talking about, you know, any of these other basic supply and demand fundamentals that can paint this picture and tell the story as to how they got to the conclusion they did? Um, some other things that I see is if somebody says, everyone should do this, or no one should do this, or it's a definite home run if you invest in this thing, right? Because every operation is different, everybody's decision making is different. So whenever somebody has these, you know, very blanket statements that are super definitive of never, always, everyone, um, to me at least that raises a, a bit of a red flag um, and I'll say hits my ear in a certain way that might cause a little bit of pause to have uh, additional thought process happen. Right when uh, considering what they're saying. So um, as you pointed out on that one, that that always goes, gives me pause, because even if they say that we are 100 percent sure prices are going to be going down, nobody, maybe they say that. Right. So you should everybody should do this. You don't know what your situation is. Maybe you have more equity built up than somebody else. And so all of that plays into that management decision. It's not, it, nothing is based simply off of prices um, and nobody knows that when they're giving that presentation. So always be careful when somebody says, this is exactly what you should be doing. Perfect, no, I agree. So with that, we wanna say thank you to all of you who are listening to this. Hopefully it uh, is, provides a good, at least um, foundational level of some things to look for in an outlook presentation and um, how to use some of that information when making a management decision and maybe hopefully even some information not to use when making a management decision. Um, sometimes I think that's as beneficial or helpful as, uh, as the contrary. So um, any additional points to include or things to watch out for? Uh, no, I think we've, you've covered most of it. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Leonard and Brenda for your presentation today. If you have not had a chance to listen to an Outlook yet this year, be sure to go online to the 2023 Wisconsin Agricultural Outlook Forum. This was a traditional situation and outlook for Wisconsin agricultural industries, including dairy, corn, soybeans, livestock, and meat. The forum was held on January 24th, 2023. Recordings are available at the website listed on your screen at rank aae.wisc.edu. Be sure to visit our UW Extension Farm Management Program website for information on articles and resources. Visit farms.extension.wisc.edu. And for more webinars, please visit Extension's Farm Ready Research Webinar Series website, where you can find Badger Dairy Insight, Future Farm Management Fridays, small ruminant webinars, and focus on forages. Thank you and have a great day.